Hey guys, welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit, Am I the A-hole? This one's from user Groundbreaking Law 53 Am I the a-hole for wanting my boyfriend to come straight home after work on some days to help me de-stress after taking care of our four-month-old son all day? Hey guys, hope y'all are keeping safe. Sorry for my roundabout story, but I hope you guys can advise me. I, 32 female, had an argument with my boyfriend's, 32 male, brother, 24 male, yesterday because he asked me why I was mad at my boyfriend when he came home. My boyfriend is an IT guy in a section of our government. He likes to go to the sauna almost every day, he says to de-stress from work, from about 5 p.m. to 8 or 9 p.m. If it's not the sauna, he goes to have a drink with friends. Because of the curfew restriction, he has to get home by 9 p.m. I have no problem with him wanting to relieve stress or having time with his friends. Everyone needs this. All I have asked of him is to compromise and come home early on some days so I can take a break for an hour or two, take a bath in peace or eat without my kids screaming to be carried. I'm a first time mom at 32, a stay at home mom and my son has refused to bottle feed so I can't supplement with formula. Basically, this means I have to be around him 24 seven. My brother-in-law knows all this as he's been staying with us for about five months now. So yesterday while arguing, he implies that my mental health is not important because my only reward should be my child's well-being and that my boyfriend's mental health is more important and that I should give him a break and I'm not being fair. He also said that me being stressed is stressing them both out and making things uncomfortable and the last thing my boyfriend needs is to come home and see my frustrations when he needs to relax. Now, I'm not asking for too much and I see red flags whenever someone makes me feel like I am. Is there another perspective to this that I'm not seeing? Am I the a-hole? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Arduos says, not the a-hole. He's a parent too and shouldn't expect you to be a single mother when in a relationship. OP responds, thank you. I thought I was going crazy for real. Potentiality Knox says, not the a-hole. Your job as a stay at home mom is to take care of your son during work hours. Your partner is still a father and has to help out. It's unreasonable to say that you have to be at work 24-7. You're not asking too much. You're definitely entitled to some time to de-stress. OP responds, Thank you. His brother made it out to be a privilege and bonding time to be with my son for 24 hours with no break. I have spoken to my boyfriend about this like three times and he appears to hear but he goes right back to doing what he's been doing. Patty's Abs says, not the a-hole at all. Both your boyfriend and his brother are majorly the a-holes. You're in an incredibly stressful position and he's leaving you to do all the stressful work of looking after a baby in order to go to the sauna for drinks every night after work? That's just not acceptable. Your health and mental well-being are important too. Quite frankly, if his job is that stressful, he should probably look for a different one and learn to put his family first. His brother is also the a-hole. You said he's been living with you this entire time, seeing how you've taken no breaks and he hasn't even offered to watch the baby for an hour or two in order to help out? Is he at least paying rent? For him to then dismiss your stress and blame you for making things uncomfortable is disgusting. OP responds, his brother is on Xbox all day when he's not sleeping and even when I'm cooking or washing clothes and my son starts to cry, he's too busy on his game to carry him and I have to leave what I'm doing and come carry my kid. He's not paying rent. He got stuck here during the bug lockdowns but they've been lifted anyway. I feel like I'm going crazy because they make it out like what my boyfriend is doing is normal and I'm the problem. Okay, OP, you are not the a-hole at all in this situation. Let's go by a-hole. First, your husband. The fact that he's going after work to either the sauna or get drinks and leaves you alone, that is an a-hole move. He's hiding from his family. That's not right. He's a father, he should man up, take care of his kid, change his diapers, feed him, put him to bed, all the works. Like every other father should. That's just part of the workload that comes with being a dad. And then a-hole number two, your brother-in-law. 
By the way, I would have put that little turd on the curve a long time ago if he ever had the gall to tell me how my family dynamics should be. Who the hell does he think he is telling you all that stuff? What angers me about his idiotic attitude is that he thinks he has an opinion. This is between you and your husband, and if he's stressed out by the baby in your house, then he can go live in a tent somewhere else. I don't give an F. And now I'm gonna stop ranting about this idiot because I don't want to eat up so many minutes. In any case, in summary OP, you're not the a-hole, your husband should step up, and your brother-in-law should shut the F up. And now, let's move on to the update to see what happened next. I suppose this falls under relationships, but just wanted to let you guys know how it went. I left my boyfriends to go rest at my mom's. During that week, my boyfriend never reached out to me, even if to check if we arrived safely or to ask about our son. And that was the answer I needed. End of the week, I texted him to ask if I could pick up my things from his place. I told him things weren't working out as he clearly didn't care about me and we weren't priority to him. He said he didn't see what he had done wrong, which is why he had kept quiet and didn't reach out. He said by me moving out, I was taking his son away from him. Yet, he spent three quarters of his free time out of the house in the sauna, three to four hours on a weekday after work, and eight hours on the weekend, every day. He said he didn't see the point of coming home to babysit a four-month-old who needed his mother more. All I wanted was for him to come home after work on some days and take care of the baby while I shower in peace or eat food. He said it's clear I wasn't ready to have a child because he knows women who work 9 to 5 jobs and still come home to cook and take care of the kids. Implying that I'm failing because I need a break for an hour? He said we could reverse roles and he wouldn't complain at all. When I told him he should be bonding with the baby, he said he'll take over when he's a toddler and easier to handle and that kids can be bribed with money and trips and they'll be your best friend. I did not make the decision to end this just because of this issue. It was a combination of all red flags. But to be honest, this was the last straw. I was running on fumes, exhausted physically and mentally, and I was asking him to help me, but he decided, without talking to me about it, that I didn't need a break. I believe he wants to live his life as a single man, but enjoy the benefits of a relationship, intimacy, companionship, good housekeeping and food, when he comes home. That's not how a relationship works. For a while, he made me feel like what I was asking for was too much, and that I was crazy for asking for a little consideration, like I wasn't worth fighting for. I felt it was wrong, and talking to you guys here on Reddit strengthened my resolve. We are now officially exes, and to be honest, I don't feel like it's a loss. I only feel stupid that I chose this person and I'm tied to him for the rest of my life and now my child is the one that suffers from my choice and not having a good father around him every day. Thank you everyone for encouraging comments and messages. You made me feel much better about everything and like I wasn't alone. You're all awesome. XOXOXO. Wow, OP, two things. One, it's great that you ended this relationship. It sounds absolutely toxic. So good for you on that front because that dude's got everything confused. He even sounds a little bit narcissistic from how you portray him. He doesn't care about bonding with his child. He just sees him as something that he needs to manage later with money and trips trying to bribe him. What the hell is in this man's head? That is not at all how you raise a proper sociable human being. That's how you raise a manipulator. Maybe that's how this guy was raised, I don't know. So OP, I would definitely watch out when it's his time to parent the kid, cause it's gonna cause trouble from you. In any case, again, congratulations on ending the toxic relationship, because you didn't stay in it just for the sake of the baby, so that's good. Because let's face it, this dude will not be a positive influence on this child. But of course, that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? This one's from user Keep My Dog. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to get rid of my dog for my pregnant sister? So my 15 male dad died not that long ago. It'll be six months next week. My mom moved us out of our house cause she said it hurt her too much to be there. And now we're living in this new house for two months now and I hate it. 
Last month, my 20-year-old sister told us she's pregnant, so now her and my mom are getting ready for a baby in the house. To be honest, I'm not really excited like them, but I thought, whatever. Until yesterday, my sister told me I have to get rid of my dog before the baby comes. I asked her why, and she said because dogs are bad for pregnant women and newborn babies because they carry germs and parasites. I told her that's not true. I always bathe my dog. He has all his shots and we take him to the vet regularly. He's also been around lots of babies before and he's super friendly to them, so he can't be a danger to her baby. My sister got mad, so she got my mom involved. She told my mom I was being a brat and that I don't care that I'm poisoning her baby. I told my mom I didn't want to get rid of my dog. My dad bought him for me as a puppy on my 9th birthday. There's been a lot of changes these months. Losing my dad, us moving and now getting ready for a new baby. My dog is the last connection to my dad. My mom's not home much, neither is my sister, so I feel like all I have is my dog. I explained to my mom why I don't want to get rid of him. She said she understands he's important to me, but I need to stop thinking about myself and consider my baby niece or nephew. I said I don't even believe my dog is bad for my sister's pregnancy. She never liked him since dad bought him and I feel like she's using this to get him out of our house. My mom said she isn't going to force me to get rid of him and she'll leave it up to me. My sister's been mad at me since and keeps making comments about how she hopes me taking my sweet time deciding what to do won't damage her baby. They're both expecting me to do the right thing, but I don't know if I want to. Does that make me bad? Am I the a-hole because I want to keep my dog? P.S. My dog avoids my sister because she treats him bad if he's close, so it's not like he'll be all over her. The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Mogeno says not the a-hole. Many studies have shown that kids who grow up with dogs have fewer allergies. Also, I hate to say this, but don't leave your dog alone with your sister. Ever. I wouldn't put it past her to get rid of the dog herself. Laura Amber adds, Piggybacking, call all rescues, pounds, and like places near you and tell them you think your sister may try to wrongly give your dog to them and that he is your legal property and not hers. Probably, technically your mother's, but as she has given you full responsibility, he's yours. Tell them the microchip number, give them an email and his picture. Do literally everything to make it hard to do. Even tell a lie and tell them that she's not allowed near you or your house, so if she turns up with your dog, tell them to call the police. It'll cause all sorts of problems at home, but you've gotta do what you've gotta do to keep your baby safe. Her giving away your dog is 20 times worse than you getting her in trouble for doing an already super crappy thing. Only issue is that she might try to privately give him away, but honestly, there is little you can do other than keep a close eye on Craigslist and other like places to see if she puts him on there. Can't get right 10 says, not the a-hole, need to get rid of your sister, where's the baby daddy? OP responds, I don't know, she was dating a security guy for a couple months before they broke up, but she was also going out with some other guy I never met. Reread202 says, not the a-hole. Please do not get rid of the dog your dad got you. Your sister is being selfish and dramatic. The dog can't harm her child. Make sure you demonstrate that you're a good dog owner. Clean up after them, take for walks, etc. Make sure they are cared for well, entertained and microchipped in case they suddenly become lost due to your sister. You've gone through significant trauma, heartbreaking loss at a young age. Your dog is your family. Millions of people across the world have dogs and kids. In fact, most dog owners have family. Put simply, it's not an issue. Your sister is being uncaring and manipulative. Don't get rid of the dog based on her lies. Don't let them bully you. The right thing is to honor your dad's memory by giving that dog a great life with the person he bought the dog for. That's you. I hope you're okay. Stay strong. Feel free to DM me if you need to vent. OP responds, 
I've always done my best to prove myself as a good dog owner. That was my dad's condition if I wanted to have a dog of my own and learn to be responsible for him. He made sure I was the one doing the walks, cleaning after him, giving baths, feeding him every day, etc. No one else does it. Yeah, he got out once and my dad got him chipped after that. And thanks, I appreciate that. My mom hasn't talked to me much, so it has felt like I haven't been able to say anything to anyone. OP, I agree with everyone, you do not need to get rid of your dog for your sister's baby's sake. It's even the opposite, your dog will be beneficial for the baby. All you need to do is read up a lot on what's online on how babies and dogs can coexist, and it's actually quite easy. Just train the dog never to go inside the nursery, and never leave the dog and the baby unattended. It's also proven that dogs help babies' development. And also, there is a very good tip that allows babies and dogs to bond quickly. Now, I've read about this on different articles. Unfortunately, I do not have medical proof to back this up. So, if I'm saying something that's wrong, please correct me in the comment section. From what I understand, newborn babies, for the first three months of their lives, expel pheromones from the top of their heads. That's the new baby smell that parents love so much. So if that baby's wearing a hat or something of the sort on its head to keep warm, then you just need to give that hat to the dog for the dog to smell as long as it needs to get that baby scent. That'll definitely help the dog bond with the baby and maybe even become a protector. So if you think I'm wrong, just call me out on the comment section. And OP, you are definitely not the a-hole. Do whatever you can to keep your dog. Your sister is in the wrong. So now, after all that, Let's go on with the update to see what happened. I read lots of people's comments to this and I was really happy to know that I wasn't hurting my sister or her baby by having my dog around. A lot of you sent me some good information. I decided to show what some of you commented to my mom and sis as proof that my dog isn't bad since she was so worried. Also, told my mom I'm not gonna get rid of my dog because he means too much to me and that would hurt him too. My mom agreed with me more after showing her the information and said my dog doesn't have to go anywhere. My sister seemed more mad after, not just because of the info, but that I told a bunch of strangers our business. She didn't see the post though. My sister still kept pushing to get rid of him because she doesn't want to be around him while she's living there. My mom and her ended up having a big fight over it. There was lots of yelling and arguing for days until finally my sister said she's leaving unless we get rid of him. She said it like a threat I guess because she thought that would make my mom make me give him away. My mom didn't want her to leave but that's what she ended up doing because I wouldn't give up my dog. For months it's been like this. She moved in with one of her friends I think but she doesn't want to talk to my mom at all. For a long time, my mom was even more sad and that actually made me start to feel guilty again because it seemed like it was all my fault. Things weren't good for a while. My mom was talking to me less and felt like we were strangers living together instead of family. But she said what happened wasn't my fault, so it's not that she was mad at me for my sister leaving. She was just sad about everything and that made her not talk or be around me. Finally, after months, my mom and me are talking better again and she's actually spending little more time with me. It's still not the same anymore though. My sister still hasn't called us and I don't know when she's due, but it should be really soon. Everything didn't happen the way I hoped it would, but I'm happy to still have my dog around. He helped me deal with everything. Thank you everyone for showing me I made the right decision keeping him. You guys made it easier to give them all this information about how wrong my sister was about dogs affecting pregnancy and showed me I wasn't doing anything bad for wanting to keep the last connection I have to my dad. He's still here by my side and I'm grateful for all the support. OP, I'm really happy you got to keep your dog. I'm sorry your sister tried to be manipulative and forced a chicken situation where she ended up leaving and now it's affecting your mom. That is very selfish and manipulative, like I said, from your sister. Now, of course, I'm not justifying what your sister is doing because she's totally in the wrong. However, since we don't know much about her besides of what you tell us, maybe she's also grieving your dad's loss and she's acting like an idiot because of it. Still, hopefully she'll get over it and reconnect with your mom and you and have you guys in her life and the baby's life too. 
All the best, OP. This one's from user Tertiary Rage Puffin. Am I the a hole for not wanting X's girlfriend to look after my child? X and I have been separated for nearly a year. Daughter, 3, lives with me for the majority of the week and then has an overnight or two at weekends with dad. I'm a full time student and work part time. Student finance and my job cover my bills, and a bursary covers most of my childcare. Nursery is invoiced only to me. Although her dad is named as a person who can collect her, he has never had anything to do with the administration or enrollment. X doesn't pay any maintenance through mutual choice. Currently, daughter goes between two nurseries. One close to where her dad lives and one close to where I moved to post-separation. The bug has meant it takes longer to change nurseries, so she attends the old one two days per week and the new one two days per week. I do all drop-offs and pickups. Recently, he has been doing the odd pickup, maybe twice or three times per month. It makes it easier for me as I don't have to rush back from uni or work to get her. X was fine with the change until around a month ago. He now wants daughter to stay at his local nursery. In theory, it would be okay, but he is unreliable and I still have to take her in the morning, which then adds two hours and fuel I have to pay for. He asked how much it would cost extra, to which I said a vaguely accurate figure. He said that that was a bit much and dropped it. It's not that I don't want her to spend time with her dad, I really do. I just need it to be consistent. Last week, he texted me her invoice amount information and suggested it wasn't a big deal for her to stay there and that I had lied about the cost. I asked how he got the information. He replied it was a guess. When I pushed him, I could tell he was lying. At pickup, I questioned the nursery staff handing over and she said, oh, he probably got it from Amy. Amy is a relatively new staff member in my daughter's room. I spoke to the nursery manager who went to ask about this. When she came back, she admitted that Amy and my ex are dating, that she was unaware of this and that she was very sorry and she would deal with it. I may have been the a-hole here, but I lost it a bit and pulled D from nursery that day as a breach of contract. They have broken my confidentiality with them, which is unacceptable. I left it with her as, and you can send my owed money to Amy seeing as that's how this business is run. Which was petty, but I was cross. Now dad has become difficult to deal with. Apparently, I only changed nurseries because he is dating Amy and I'm being jealous and preventing him from seeing daughter. I'm not. His family have become an echo chamber for this. I don't care who he is dating, but I care that he is using someone to gain financial information, which is now not safe. The nursery is in a position of trust, which they have broken. He has a history of doing questionable things with my financial history, so this is a huge trigger for me. Am I the a-hole? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Financial Tennis 6 says, not the a-hole. Usually I'm pretty laid back and have the attitude of everyone makes mistakes, but this is a huge mistake. Please report her. This type of thing is unacceptable. Personal and financial information should absolutely never be given out and can lead to some very serious consequences. There are many instances of custody issues going south and ending up endangering a parent or child and that was over the line for her to do that. Edit. There was some confusion in the comments so just wanted to clarify. The ex could easily have called around and figured out the general rates on his own. OP deliberately mentioned the invoice and that he knew the exact invoice amount, which means that he had to have actually seen the financial documents to have known that. OP responds, there are reasons why he isn't allowed my financial information. I was quite concerned that he would have got my banking details from the invoice if it was a historical one, though I've been assured that's not possible. I'm very dumb, help, says, not the a-hole. What Amy did is effed up. Surely she broke some sort of rule. You did the right thing in pulling out your daughter from that nursery. You dropping your daughter off every day at that faraway nursery and traveling for an extra two hours is a massive pain and would interfere with your studies massively. 
OP responds, thing is, if he could promise to pick her up on the two days, I would be willing to change our custody agreement. It would help me with work and studying hugely. But he is so unreliable, it would definitely end up biting me in the butt. Tinkerbell2306 says, not the a-hole. The nursery worker should be disciplined for sharing any confidential information. Plus, she should have declared her relationship to her boss as soon as it happened. I don't get jealousy at all from this, just anger, which is justified. OP responds, I'm not jealous. I really couldn't care less that he's dating someone. Although, I may be a bit annoyed that Amy is in a loco parentes role without me being told. He kicked off royally when he found out I had dated someone from my uni class, only for a couple of weeks, and they never met daughter. So I find all of this a bit rich. OP, I agree with you pulling your daughter from that nursery and you are not the a-hole. Here's my reasoning. You both are separated and he doesn't pay anything, no maintenance, nothing. You are the one that gets invoiced for the nurseries and that money comes from a bursary because you're studying. So he has no connection whatsoever to that money. Additionally, as you said, he's done some sketchy things with your financial information before. So I would very be on the defensive on this one as well. Now, Amy, regardless of her relationship with your ex, she should not have disclosed that information. As you say, that is a huge breach of trust. And like one of the commenters said, she should have told the administration that she was dating one of the parents. That's not right. On a side note, I have no idea why your ex feels or thinks that he has some sort of ground to complain about this. Additionally, what's up with his family? Who rattled their cage? They've got no say whatsoever on this, so ignore them or block them because honestly, they have nothing to do here. What about you guys? What do you think? Do you think the ex has a right to know how much OP is paying? And did Amy did the right or wrong thing? Well, on that note, let's move on to the update to see what happened next. It's been a busy morning. First thing, 8 a.m., I called the nursery. The manager, Kelly, was already in and expecting my call. Firstly, she apologized profusely. She said she had no idea that Amy was dating a parent and that they have a policy about it which she should have divulged immediately. Amy hadn't arrived at that point. I stated that I was very angry about this. I mentioned all the legal information I had been given here and explained I would be reporting this to Ofsted, that is, the Office for Standards in Education, Children's Services and Skills, later today. At around 9ish, my ex texted me for the first time since Friday. What have you said to daughter's school? He calls it that. I replied, why? And he sent back, because Amy has been called into the office. There was a bit of back and forth. He stated that he didn't ask for my invoice and that Amy got it on her own to show him. That's relevant. They matched on Tinder a while ago and then met when he picked daughter up five weeks ago. Apparently, she wasn't in daughter's room then and daughter hasn't met her outside of nursery at all and they are not really dating, just talking at the moment. The bug. I've said it's not about her or their relationship and he knows that. He then texted, probably going to knock it on the head later anyway. I've said he's an idiot. I've told him he needs to put a muzzle on his mom and sister. He apparently didn't know they were threatening court. I told him that I'd posted about this somewhere and the overwhelming reply I got, including everything about child maintenance and questioned whether he has used my invoices to claim money from Universal Credit. He said no and I said I would be following that up. I asked if he wants me to take him to court. He crapped himself a bit, so instead we've agreed to meet later in the week and set out a concrete plan that he cannot renege on. I also asked to see proof of daughter's bank account. At 10, Kelly called me back. Amy has been suspended due to the investigation and will likely lose her job. Ofsted will be notified on their end too as well as something with her DBS, Disclosure and Barring Service. They will be looking at their policies. All staff will be expected to retrain through all the safeguarding policies and I will be updated on that, etc, etc. If I still want to remove daughter from them, then my month's notice cost will be waived. I have confirmed this is the case. At the moment, this is it. That's the tea. 
Well, OP, apparently the community comments and the help they gave you came through for you, so that's good. From what you say, your husband does sound sketchy and not very bright. I mean, he clearly is up to something. I'm not sure Amy out of her own will would have shown an invoice unless he would have asked for it. Or she's another kind of idiot. In any case, the nursery is going to be updating their policies, so that's good. And you're taking your child away from there, so that's also good for you. Hopefully this whole incident will jumpstart some neurons inside your ex's head and he'll start behaving a little bit more appropriately and also shut down his family. So in the meantime, all the best to you and your daughter, OP. And that's it for this video. If you'd like, here are other videos from my channel that you would enjoy. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.